Hello and welcome to my channel. I am the Hooded Lid and I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm going to give you a little backstory here. There is sometimes a high percentage, but certainly a percentage of videos that I shoot that never make it and I have to shoot them again. And that is primarily for one of three reasons. One, the light situation. All I have are two umbrella lights and I depend a lot on natural light coming through an open door which is why I'm wearing a lot of sweaters because it's cold outside. When it's cloudy, it could be a little different. If I'm shooting outside of a very specific window of time, it can be a little different. And sometimes I put things in the camera, I'm like, it's just, no, it's not gonna happen. Into my computer after I shoot, because I really can't tell from looking in my LED screen here if it's going to work or not. And YouTube tends to, make everything more orange. So it might look great when I put it into my computer and then I send it up to YouTube and it looks yucky. So I have to play around with my settings and it's just very hard for me to tell. Another reason is sometimes I brain fart. Sometimes I can speak boom, 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 especially with my perfume reviews because I know it very well and I test them again, and they're perfumes I know, so I'm already familiar with them, and I take notes on them. So I got my notes, I know what my thoughts are, and it's easy. And putting on makeup is a little bit different because you're cutting, you don't want to show everyone the whole five minutes of putting on your foundation, and sometimes what you're cutting to doesn't work well, or I'll be doing my eyes and I'll start to say something, and it'll be like six sentence, six seconds before I finish it, and sometimes I can edit it and sometimes I'm like, you know what, it's just not flowing. I'm going to have to redo. And sometimes it's sound. I live in an area with a narrow street and there's hills on both sides. And if anyone is having any kind of work, like plumbing work, or there's a truck nearby, or it's trash day, or tree trimming, what happens here a lot, I can hear it, even if I can't see where it's happening. So. Several days ago, I shot this video and I edited it and last night I loaded it up to go on on Friday, but I took a look at it after it went up, which I don't always do, which I probably should, and I thought, no, I, I can't give this out. And while I was shooting it, I could hear it and I thought, I'm going to forge through, I'm going to forge through, even though in my brain it was like setting me off. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But I just didn't know when it was going to stop, if it was going to stop, and I blocked it out in my brain. And because I need that natural light, and we have had cloudy weather and rain, I feel like I need to bank a lot of things for those bad weather days when I can't shoot anything. But just because I blocked it out doesn't mean the sound was blocked out. And I'm watching this, and even when there weren't chainsaws going or the chipper was going, there was this mmm of the motor of the truck that had the chipper. And I thought, if I were watching this, if, if it weren't my video, I would be clicking off just because the sound is making me crazy. And since most people don't watch my videos all the way all through, I'm not really doing myself any favors putting this up. So even though I spoke well, the light was great, I loved the look, I'm taking it down and I'm redoing it. Oh, and here's another thing. This morning, Jamie Page posted the very same look. Breaks my heart. So just FYI, I'm not copying what she did. I already shot this a couple of days ago. It was going to go up tomorrow, and there you go. So I already shot this look here. I've already had my foundation, my blush, my bronzer on. I took off my eye makeup except for my mascara. I shot that um, an hour, two hours ago. If you want to see how I got there, it's the By Terry Focus, which is either coming up soon or it's already been posted. And it's just going to be about the lips and the eyes. Backstory part one. Backstory part two. Last week I was at Sephora and I noticed they were deep, deep discounts on Bite. Obviously Bite is redoing. It looks like the entire line and the discounts were deep. But I didn't see any colors that were interesting to me. All that was left were the very dark colors, and that's so outside my wheelhouse. Then a few days later I went to a different Sephora because I was preparing for the spend $75, get $25 off, which is a great deal, and I just tried to figure out what I wanted to get, and I was looking at concealers. 
And while I was there, I tried something on, and there was an essay hanging out with me, and she said, I really like it. I said, wow, it's, I mean, it's almost goth. And she's like, no, no, I like it. So I got it. I got two. This is cognac, and this is sucra. And I'm telling you about this because by the time this airs, they won't be available anymore, but I have a feeling the colors will still be around, just in a different formulation. And then when I was waiting in line to leave, there were the Huda Obsessions nudes there, and I just put my finger in the brown and put it on my lid, and I loved this deep chocolate look. It reminded me of things I remember from the 70s, maybe the late 70s, mid-70s, when I was a teenager and reading Vogue and Bazaar and all the magazines, I was quite the little addict. And I liked that brown chocolate semi-retro look. And so I'm doing it today. I'm the Hooded Lid and welcome to my channel. <laughs> I know it took a long time to get there, but actually doing it, it's not going to be too long since I'm pretty much all done here. I'm going to change the blush. It's about the lips and the eyes. Let's get started with the eyes. I'm starting with the coral color in the Natasha Denona Coral Palette. I'm just going to put that all over the lids. And should I move you in? Should I move in? Eh. I'm good. Sometimes I think I go too close, especially at my age. You know what I mean? So many people don't go close. It's like, why should I? <laughs> I, I do have some ego. There's nothing on my lids, and it's going on so well. This is going on so nicely. It, there's nothing at all on my lids. Where usually there's moisturizer, and then I'll put on some of my concealer, and then I'll powder it. But when I took off my makeup from the By Terry video, I didn't put anything else on. And nice. Very nice. Uh, Anastasia Soft Glam. I'm going to go into Sienna and mix a little bit with the orange soda, just to kind of calm it down a little bit. And just right where my eyeball is, and then the outer third. And making sure that when my eyes are open, you can see that dark color. And you can, just a shade, just a shade. So even though I dipped it in the orange soda, the other brown is more of a red tone brown. And again, just feeling around the eyeball to the best of my ability, since I do have a fat pad right here. It's kind of hard to feel. Eyes open. And I'm just going to pull out a little bit on the side with whatever's left. And apparently there's a lot left. I'm going to do what I did in the store, which is just dip my finger in the Huda's. I love Huda eyeshadows. I think they're really soft and creamy, and you can use them with your fingers. Um, I'm going to do Mulberry. Now, the Anastasias are a little more scratchy, so they're a little more difficult to do it this way, but not impossible. And when I do that, I'm feeling the orbital bone. I know it's crazy. Trust me when I tell you we will get there. Or not. Always a chance that not will happen. And now I'm just going to move this around. I don't want this to go too high. So I'm just kind of mapping it out very lightly with the brush. And now a little blendy blend. And now I can go in with a little bit more of a firmer touch. And then just work on the edge a little bit. And bring it in a little. Next eye. How even are they, you ask? Not at all. That's okay, we can fix it. 
So this one is too high, this one is too low. I'm going in with a smaller brush. I'm going to raise this one just the teeniest bit. Kind of hard since I have mascara on, but not impossible. And whatever's left, I'll just buff in this area that usually goes bald. So now they're a little bit more even. I'm going in with the brush that's in the Anastasia and the Laura Mercier and doing a little blending. The one thing I like about these brushes that come with these palettes is they're pretty firm. So they make a good blending. Okay, next. I feel that there's a little more shadow on this eye upper, and I'm going to go very softly with a Q-tip. Part of the reason I want to do it softly is I do think sometimes a soft hand works, you know? But also because if I go in too hard, I'm just going to make it red in that area and it will, I won't be able to see what my progress is because I'll be looking at the red. I think that is pretty close. Now I'm going to take a big Hakahoto and I love to use this for my final blend. Make sure the edges are not too sharp, which they are not. Wipe it off and go into this side and do another blend. Sometimes I feel like a doctor, you know, and here are my, I'm a surgeon and here are my tools. Back into the coral. Just on the inner. I'm going into Sienna to put a little bit under my eyes. This is something I do with great caution because of my darkness and my crepiness and the size of my eyes. I don't generally put color under my eyes because I, I feel that it makes my eyes look smaller. But this is kind of a hazy brown look and I think it's appropriate for this look. So I'm just being really careful about it. Going into the mulberry again just to work it right down here. Just the outer edge, and I'm not bringing it up into the crease. I'm going to spend some time working in circular motions. It's a nice little. Sometimes when I do this, maybe not with this brush, with other brushes that aren't as dense, it feels like I'm massaging my eyeballs. It's so relaxing. All right, there is my chocolate eye in 70s inspired. And now we're going to do the lip, which is what inspired me in the first place. And this is cognac. I'll probably cut away here because me putting on lip products is a scary sight. I love these when they're new because they still have a point and you can actually use them almost like a liner. But since I have used these a couple of times already, I'm not getting that liner effect, so I want to go in with a brush and just fix it up. Now I'm going to go in with a blush. This is Chanel Tempting Beige. I thought it was discontinued, but recently I think I've seen it online, and I can't show you because it's broken, and I'm going to use it kind of as in a contour area. And I do have a blush on already, the By Terry blush in Nude Dance. I 
I'm just going to freshen up my foundation a little bit with my NARS because I have been wearing glasses since I put it on and I'm sure I have some rub off here. I do feel that when you are wearing these kind of strong colors, whether it's berry or brown or a big red eye, it's important to have the skin look as smooth as possible in coloration. So I'm just going to do a little bit around my nose. I know this look is edging on gothic, but we're going to fix it. little powder around the cheeks because I don't like a shiny cheek and especially for this kind of look. So this is pretty much the look. But if you find that the brown is a little too much for you, it's a little too stark, you can just put a little bit of nude over it. I use the Bite Flat White when I was in the store and it just lightened up enough, but that is sold out everywhere, online, in, in both the stores that I went to. And I use the Marc Jacobs Sugar Sugar, which I brought back upstairs. So I'm going to just go in with a nude color. This is an old color that Clinique does not make anymore. Shame on you. But there's a ton of colors, you know, similar to this. And I'm going to go in with a lip liner. just takes the edge off a little bit. And that's it. That's my 70s inspired, um, slightly retro. I really like it. And it's not something that people are doing right now, except for, of course, Jamie did it today. So, but I did it first, unless she shot it last week, because I shot this on Monday. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it because I don't want people to think that I copy other people, because I don't like that, unless you say I was inspired by this person. And I wasn't inspired by her. I, I was inspired by the color that I bought on Monday. And I shot this on Monday. All right. <laughs> well, welcome to the inner dialogue of my head. And thank you for spending some time with me. I hope I might have inspired you. And I hope you come back again. And until then, I'm wishing you a great day.